Hello everybody, my name is Ilya. And my name is Tyler. Together we make up Kavre, a couple that loves to play board games. Especially Garfield games. We love Garfield games and that's why we're excited about the video today where we're going to be talking about... Inventors of the South Tigers, the conclusion to the third trilogy. The third trilogy. Mm -hmm. Holy moly, can you believe? Can you believe it? No. <laughs> <laughs> I really cannot, but I can invent it. Wow. Inventors is designed by Shem Phillips and Sam McDonald. It's published by Garfield Games, and the art is done by the Mika. Now, this is a prototype, and it may be subject to change, but it's pretty close. Mm -hmm. Now, in Inventors, you'll take a role of an inventor. What you'll do is you'll invent various devices, you'll build them, and then you'll show them off to people across the lands, hoping to get your work published so it can be in the House of Wisdoms. Yes. With that quick intro out of the way, let's take a look at how the game works. Let's do it. In Inventors of the South Tigris, your goal is to score the most points. You'll do this by inventing devices, building and testing them, and having them published. This game is played over a course of three to four rounds, which will be tracked by your tent placements. You can choose to play a shorter game with three tents, or a standard one with four. At the beginning of the round, all players will gain royalties and income, which is determined by the player mark on the royalty track and your lowest tower tile on your board. Throughout the round, you'll take turns taking actions, which will often involve dice placement, worker placement, or tent placement. The round will end once everyone has placed their tent. Before we dive in, let's chat dice. Upon setting up, you'll have dice in various sections of your player board. The dice in the ready, determined, and inspired sections are available to be used at any time, while the dice in the exhausted section may not be used unless they're brightened. Brightening is a common action that will allow you to move dice up through and out of the study and up different levels. Now let's go through the four core actions, which can be seen on your player board. You can do all of these by placing dice on the camel spaces. At the start of the game, you'll start with two, but as the game continues, you'll be able to place up to four sets of dice by taking various actions. Now, the first core action is Invent. Here, you'll place your dice in a camel space. The total here has to be equal to or higher than the value required in the device board in which you want to invent on. You'll then discard the device cards as indicated by the board, place your device, gain influence for any matching icons in the guilds, advance your royalty marker, and place one of your invention tiles over the bottom left corner of the device board. If you uncover icons, you'll resolve their effects. Now, if you use orange dice in this action, you'll be able to draw a device card for each orange die used. That's invent. Build is the next action. Here, you'll again place a dice based on the value on the device card and pay your craftspeople. Now, they have to be active, and as you pay them, they'll move up the tower and become inactive. Once all the craftspeople have moved out of the bottom space of the tower, you'll take the corresponding action, flip the tile, and shift the tower down, giving your craftspeople more room to move. Once you pay your craftspeople, the tile that was placed earlier comes into play. The inventor and the builder will both resolve the effect on the tile. After this, you'll flip the invention tile and place it in the top right of the device board, place your influence marker on the builder slot, and shift the whole device one space to the right. A charcoal die here, if used, will allow you to refresh one of your craftspeople. Test! You can only do this action to devices that have been built or published, obviously. You'll place one white die from the supply in the camel space and place one of your available colored die into the device board with an empty die space of the same color. The die you place must be equal to or higher than all the dice currently present on the device board. If an influence is present, you'll gain it, and then you'll proceed to move your ship the amount of spaces indicated. When moving your ship, you'll skip over any spaces that are missing workshop tiles and collect workshop tile on the space you land on. Adding to your workshop is free for the first space, but will cost you a coin per additional space in the same row moving forward. Now your workshop is essentially an action engine, which we'll talk about in a second. Testing will increase the victory points builders and publishers get for each device. Now the last core action is Publish. You'll place a die on the camel space equal to or higher than 8, then pay a silver to the inventor, pay your scribe and any one other craftsperson as explained previously, advance on the royalty track, place an influence on the publisher slot, and move the board to the right. This section can contain any number of devices, while the first two columns can only contain a maximum of four each. When publishing, if using a blue die, you may brighten any one die for each one used. This could in turn grant you a much needed silver if brightening in the study, 
or just help you acquire dice for the future. Now that's the four core actions. Instead of utilizing the camels, you can place dice in the workshops and utilize the engine of actions you built up. Each workshop requires a value and sometimes a color. You can resolve every workshop tile in any order as long as you've met the dice requirement. You don't have to meet every single tile's requirement when placing the dice. Instead of placing dice, you can place workers. There are spaces under the guilds which will grant you abilities for a cost, usually influence and sometimes an additional cost too. These are restricted to one a player. There's a few additional spaces that are limited to one worker as well. These provide substantial benefits, but at quite a cost. An example of a benefit is the ability to move your ship one space and gaining a coin. The spaces near the center of the board that are larger can be used by any amount of workers. And the spaces underneath the guilds are quite essential as not only are their actions quite strong and give you the ability to gain a colored die along with some additional actions, the alternative to taking that is obtaining one research. Researching allows you to place your influence in a previously placed research tile or place a new research tile by placing your influence marker on an empty space, drawing three tiles, choosing one, and immediately gaining access to that research. In the first section, the research you'll encounter is an ongoing ability dependent on the condition listed. The second set of tiles, the research will trigger once you place a tent. And the last section is immediate effects that only trigger once. And that's placing your workers. Lastly, you can place a tent. You'll usually do this closer to the end of the round when you run out of actions to take. You'll first gain a refresh and brighten action for any leftover camel or worker you have not used. You'll then resolve the effects of the past tile next to your place tent, any abilities from the middle research tiles, and finally, any effects from your player board where you move your tent from. And that's the core of your actions. There's also a few free actions you can take which involve discarding your device cards or utilizing your craftspeople for coins. Now after you place your tent, your selection of actions will change. You'll be able to use your workshop, brighten one die, refresh one craftsperson, or pay one craftsperson to move all die from one workshop to your exhausted section. When everyone has placed tents, the round immediately ends. The leftmost placed tent will be the player who is a new star player for the round. The remaining dice you have will be brightened. All dice you use will go to the exhausted section. The hired camel will reset, workers will be retrieved, and finally you'll raise your tents. The first three tent spaces will grant you two influence for each tent at the end of the game in the corresponding guild. This one here will grant you an additional worker, and the last one will grant you a hired camel for the next round. Now after you've completed the last round, you'll score. You'll score guild majorities, accounting for tents, points from the royalty track, research tile, craftspeople, workshop tiles, invention tiles, builder and publisher influence, and built and published devices, which will be objectives you'll score as a builder, publisher, or both. Additionally, you'll gain points from any remaining silver and device cards you have left, tally all the points, and the player with the most wins. Will you invent the best device? Devices, I would say. I only want to do one and I just want to specialize in it. Well, good luck winning the game like that. <laughs> so what do we got for everybody today? What are we going to talk about when it comes to inventors? Well, we'll show you some of the key takeaways of some of the stuff that really stood out to us while we played this game. Mm -hmm. uh, now we played both the short version, which is a three round game, yeah. and the long version, and we really got a good feel of the game between the two. But we'll tell you about our experience of kind of how we rolled and invented through that game too. Exactly. Well, let's kick it off. My first thing that I want to talk about to everybody about is obviously the devices that you're going to be building, inventing, and like basically managing your strategy around really is what mm -hmm. it comes down to. Because these inventions that you'll play throughout the game will have these goals and objectives that will score you additional points. You'll get points for obviously like participating in inventing, building, publishing them, and testing them. Mm -hmm. But the thing about that is then there's like secret objectives, not secret objectives, but objectives that will get you extra points at the end that you do really want to be playing, paying attention to that's happening on the rest of the board. It's really interesting because it starts off with those cards in your hand. Yeah. Yep. And you can really be, you can really say, hey, I'm going to invent this and take this all the way to publishment mm -hmm. in order for me to score the most points. And there's so many different ways you can score those end game points that your strategy really shifts game to game. And it's really interesting to 
really lean into it from the first couple of turns. So you can yep. really set up those moment that momentum to get there. Yeah. Well, and even to that point, like you can play a card from your hand and not actually even <laughs> score anything from it. It's valuable to just invent the card. And then you can look at what everybody else is playing and decide mm -hmm. from there what you actually want to score points on. Maybe your goal that comes up in a few turns is just like perfect for what you've already been working on. Then you need to be, be a part of it somehow, some way. And I think that's where the theme of it really comes into me for me. Because the player interaction and the theme really go well together. Because, hey, I could invent something. But I don't have to be the first person to build it. Maybe somebody has the resources to look at my invention and be like, I'm going to build that. And I'm like, what? How are you doing this? But, but also thank you. <laughs> exactly. All that player interaction is just so interesting because you're collectively doing everything. And like Tyler said, you can be looking and say, hey, I can build that. That's really beneficial for me to build. Or I can test this. Or I can actually publish an article about this to make sure that this is a work that is cemented. Yes. Obviously, you're going to be competing for points while you're doing this, which I found very interesting. And I think that's part of the key standout that we want to talk about is that like there is more or what felt like there's more player interaction because you're paying attention to, am I going to cut somebody off from being able to even be a part of this anymore? And they won't score any points because they can't publish it. They can't build it anymore. No. Who knows? So I thought that was really interesting. If you've only been managed to play this at two players, and there's a variant for two player that kind of increases a little bit of that complexity, but I do think this will really shine at three and four players because of oh, that the game in a whole, a hundred percent, I agree because the AI in this doesn't impact the devices at all at a two player count. So just thinking about how it would happen with a four player it gets me it gets me excited to play more. Now another key sound in this game is the engine building aspect. So as you'll be traveling, showcasing your devices, you'll acquire some workshop tiles and you'll be able to place research tiles, which yes. will give you benefits when doing certain things in the game. And I think throughout when you sail and do all of those things, it'll be really beneficial to you because you're invent you're testing in that process too, usually when sailing. Yeah. yeah. So that creates a little bit of variety as the game progresses and gives you more things that you're able to do through your workshop or through that research. Yeah. And it very much motivates you to, to test because that really is the major way that you're going to be moving through the river or sea or whatever it might be. You're the body of water. Uh, <laughs> the river or the sea or whatever it might be. I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. <laughs> Who knew? Anyways, my point being is because you're going to be testing and then moving along those river, the body of water, it's, it's really interesting to see like what ends up coming out of that. Mm -hmm. And the research tiles that end up being placed when you do do that research through that worker placement aspect of the game mm -hmm. is also really cool because it's like benefits for you mm -hmm. later or immediate if you get all the way down to the end. Mm -hmm. But Every time you do an action, you get an extra bonus, but other people can join in on the fun. There's always two people that are allowed to be associated with the research tiles. Mm -hmm. So it's again, that like open board, allowing people to um, interact with you a little bit more mm -hmm. that I'm just gonna kind of probably come back to every time we talk about any of these key standout points. <laughs> Now the next key standout point is the need to plan ahead in this Yeah. Game. Now, I feel like this is one of those games that you can't just be thrown into. Because I feel like there's a lot of games you can kind of discover and by the end of it you might not do too bad. Uh, this is a game where you have to really have a plan and have a really thorough understanding of how everything mm -hmm. worked. Uh, the first time we played this game, we did not do that great. Yeah, I think there was just so much going on in the game mm -hmm. that we didn't necessarily pay attention to those end game device goals. Yep. And that really like bit us in the butt. Well, I think it was also planning. We were always short for coins, or we forgot that we could have done this. And how mm -hmm. it all interconnected was a really interesting piece. Yes. But as soon as we played again, it just felt that much better because now all of a sudden we've corrected all the strategies. We've thought ahead in a lot of places. And this is a game that you'd really, if you're a planner, if you like knowing what you're going to do, how you're going to get there and build a strategy around that, this game is definitely going to be for you. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. And don't get me wrong when I say this, there is like definite ways to push yourself into a certain strategy based on the board that mm -hmm. is put in front of you. I think that's like really great. And I like being able to have those like key decision points being like, oh yeah, this goal is out here. I built it. I'm a part of that goal. Let's make sure I can make this happen. 
So there's those like give and takes that you have to understand. Obviously, I've been mentioning this like bit more player interaction that you're going to be experiencing, I think is like also something that doesn't necessarily get flawed when you're planning ahead. Yeah. I think that you're still able to push forward with your strategy when you are planning ahead. It just adds like a little bit more complexities. Now, a couple other quick things is the the flow between your personal boards and the main board was quite interesting. Mm. I think because you have that communal area in the middle and you're focusing so much on it, you're still focusing quite a bit on your own player board with the various dice management, the way you're managing the craftspeople, your workshop, and the spaces that you have left for your camels and uh, even the workers that you have. So yeah. there's quite a lot to manage from your own area and how it flows between the main board is really fun. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think uh, we'll get into it a little bit more later on, but similar to Scholars, it felt like you were very much like interacting with like your board in front of you with the dice that you had, mm -hmm. and then everything else kind of was like in the main board area. And last but not least, if we focus in on the player boards, it's really fun and really interesting to like upgrade your craftspeople mm -hmm. to then go farther into your tower. And I thought that was very interesting because the higher they get up, the more points they score you. And it was this very neat, like exhaust your um, craftsperson to move them up because they've become more knowledgeable in certain things. And it was really, really fun. Fun thematically, I suppose. I feel like I made a story of it in my head where they're just like walking up the stairs and they're, did you know that? And they're just learning throughout as the way that you're going. But that whole like rapid mechanic was really interesting too. Like you flip the tiles, you move, you get benefits. Mm -hmm. And of course you score points to them at the end of the yeah, game too. Yeah, exactly. But they're so crucial in it to everything that you're doing. And anytime you pay them, they do get the opportunity to move up. Uh, which was just really fun to yeah. acknowledge and to partake in. Yeah, and it's this smaller piece of the puzzle that I think like made a lot of sense when you were doing all the other mm -hmm. actions on the board. It was just like a, another administrative thing that you could do to make your engine stronger. Yep. And I thought that was like thematically really great. Now let's get into the questions. Mm -hmm. This is why you're here. You want to know some stuff from us. <laughs> let's ask those questions and mm -hmm. give you some answers. The first one is how complex is this game? Yeah, uh, let's just start by coming back to a comment that you made earlier about the fact that it's hard to get into this game. Yeah. I think starting out in this game, there's like a high learning curve mm -hmm. that needs to be reached to be able to like really feel like you get the game. Mm -hmm. And I think that if you're going to venture into inventors that you just need to be aware of that mm -hmm. uh, but once you do it feels in my opinion relatively smooth smooth sailing mm -hmm. <laughs> in the river or whatever that land in the body of water <laughs> <laughs> yeah i feel like to me i feel pretty strongly that this is the most complex garfield game that there is uh, just because I think my mind just there's I feel like I'm a pretty seasoned board gamer and I just could not <laughs> grasp some things right off the bat and I think it took me a long time to remember specifically some of the things mm -hmm. and how the process worked and how it flowed even with the reference cards and the rule book oh, yeah. handy yeah. so I think when when that happens I do think the game is quite complex and I think because it's not the most intuitive to know like this is how to get coins this is how to do this this is the best way to kind of flow through the strategy uh, to me is definitely higher up there mm -hmm. but would I compare it to another game it gave me like knots of complexity of like clinic clinic it's not as punishing as clinic but it's I understand what you're clinic. saying but I will say I think what what Ilya might be trying to get into is the fact that it's got like this tight resource management these multitude of actions that you can take and this like discovery aspect that you really need mm -hmm. to allow yourself to do really makes this game a lot more complex mm -hmm. uh, starting off. Yes. Yeah. But I do agree with you that once you get into it, even like the few games we had after, it just flows and it feels it really good yeah. because you know what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, just a hard entry point. Yeah, I 100% agree. Now question number two. What was your favorite part of this game? I think my favorite part of this game would have to be, honestly, it's the tower. Yeah. It's the tower Red of my mind. increasing craftspeople. I feel like it was just such a cool and unique mechanic, and it just made sense. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was cool how to prioritize them. It was interesting how you could just move some up without having to pay them through some of the other actions. Yeah. Uh, and the way that it connected in various parts of the game, I just loved. 
Yeah, I agree. Uh, mm-hmm. what, what I will also add to my favorites is that I liked the dice and how they were used this time around. I think that um, the colors were straightforward. It's basically there was three different colors outside mm-hmm. of uh, the regular um, plain white dice. And those, if you use them in a certain action, would benefit you in somehow. It was very straightforward. Mm-hmm. It made a lot of sense. Um, and I, for that reason, like I didn't have to think about it on top of all the other mm-hmm. things that were the moving parts that were there. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Now, on the other end, what are some of the areas of this game that you want improved, or maybe that didn't resonate with you as much? Didn't really resonate with me. I think that the this is maybe like a maybe theme type thing that I might be missing, but I think the exploring, like the mm-hmm. sailing of the ship, it made sense that you needed to move across and gather mm-hmm. those research tiles, g- gather those workshop tiles. I understood that, but I for some reason like I, there was a bit of a disconnect for between if I'm testing, then I get to move. Well, it's because you're grabbing your little device and, and you have to sail I, a little bit. It'd be like, you here. can't just show it to the same people. Yeah, you have to show it to different people. I, I guess. I just, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> just Anyways, missed a, I think I think there was a bit of a disconnect okay. for me personally there. That's fair. I appreciate that. I think for me, I would have loved like one or two more reference cards in this game. I think uh, there was one that was had in it. It was really, really helpful. I referenced it a lot. But I think, like, knowing of, like, how do you get coins? Or uh, quick, quick <laughs> you remo- love You love your reference cards. I do love my <laughs> reference cards. I think, it, I, especially, like, trying to figure stuff out, I think it could answer some of those frequent questions. Mm-hmm. And I do think some of the times you, like, don't forget... Because there's a couple of reminders that we consistently forgot, and it would be nice to be like, don't forget these two things. Uh, when I you suppose, do this, yeah. like it would have been nice to see we, it. Uh, yeah. I forgot stuff. Okay, okay. <laughs> or like yeah. later I remembered and yeah. we like fixed it. But uh, I think one or two more reference cards, especially as a newer player in this game too, would have helped a tremendous yes. amount. Yeah. I, I can see where you're coming from there with that. I think like even to that point, it's more of like uh, reading, like the glossary was really good, but mm-hmm. also like, the the iconography if you're familiar with Garfield games is very much the same Mm -hmm. so um for people who have played these types of games they're just gonna like recognize it almost immediately but still like you've got to place things uh, onto the main board to understand where you're going to get the coins from etc 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 i think i also got spoiled because in worms fan there was that card it's like here are suggestions for the first three Uh, turns you can do this then you can do this then you can do this uh so we're coming off of a high for that (laughs) well i think it's a sandbox experience too because here you really can start off and do really anything oh yeah oh yeah so it's kind of that trial and error of like what do i want to do first do i want to build something right off the bat do i actually potentially want to publish something that's already there like you just have so much flexibility in the beginning it was hard to get started in my opinion yeah i get it i think the last thing that we'll mention for these uh why might you want to play this game is the flow of the game and like how how did that impact what you were actually doing Mm -hmm. and what i will tell you is that like the other two in this uh series in this trilogy you do you basically do one thing Mm -hmm. And that one thing might be just grab resources, go through your engine in your workshop and do those types of things. Or it might be some more complicated, like building a device, which is not that complicated once you get going. Mm -hmm. But realistically, it's nice. The flow is good. Everybody's only going to be doing one thing on their turn. And because of that, turns felt like relatively quick. Mm-hmm. and the pacing was nice you didn't feel at least I didn't feel like I was um rushed for a turn or that I was waiting on you to like decide what you wanted to do I think that's the element I really enjoyed of the game is that you had kind of three distinct things you could do you could do one of the core things of like inv- invent build a test or publish yeah, yeah. uh you can go to your workshop and do your workshop actions or you can actually place your workers yeah. and do some of the worker actions now your kind of round completion was placing the tent but what's really interesting if i place a tent early i actually had availability of actions additional actions i could take that essentially helped my game out quite a bit yeah, yeah. so if you finish early which a lot of games that don't kind of have those uneven rounds 
you can, you're still doing stuff. And some of the stuff you're doing, you have access to, you, you couldn't do before, mm -hmm. which is really interesting, which I really like as it kept you engaged in the game rather than like, oh, I've passed. Now I'm just waiting for Tyler to take his yes. six turns yeah, so yeah. he could get there. Yeah. I mean, yes, I agree. But uh, like, I think strategy wise, like even if you place you your tent. You don't want to pass. Yeah. No, no, no. Even if you placed your tent, I would want to place my tent a couple turns after mm -hmm. at least because I don't want to give you too many easy yeah. refresh for your craft well, kind true. of thing, right? That's true. So there's just, I, I do agree. I do agree. It's a good thinky strategy bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, last but not least, I think everybody kind of wants to know this, but how do we think it compares to the other two in this trilogy, Scholars and Wayfarers? Well, for me, this is an extremely difficult question because I'm just bad at ranking games and understanding because <laughs> each of them has their own place, their own demographic, and... Uh, I can confirm. Can but, confirm. But, uh, if I was to choose my favorites, um, I... First of all, this trilogy is fire. It's yeah. extremely well done. Each of the games is just so well thought out. And I would play any of them in a heartbeat. I would enjoy any of them in a heartbeat. I love to introduce them to people, but it, it, this tr trilogy is also the most complex, complex. out yes. of the three. Yes. So I feel like most of the time when we introduce Garfield games, we usually steer towards like architects because that's just what we know, and I think it's a fun introduction to. Uh, but I would even suggest yeah. the North Sea trilogy yeah. exactly. So having said all of that, I do. I'm going to rank them because that's fun. Sure. I'm going to say uh, Wafers is my least favorite of the three. Oh. Uh, which su surprised me because I really liked it. And I think it was my least favorite is I think the there's a lot of things in one area that was just hard sometimes to... <laughs> the tableau building was a lot of fun for me. It, but well, I get it. I, I, get I it. think it's... No, I really liked it. I think it just felt like it could be like a little knock to the table. could pull all the cards. <laughs> Even more. Yeah, this, okay, is okay, okay. Anyways, this is anyways, me splitting hairs. This is me splitting hairs. Now between... Inventors and Scholars, as of right now, I think Scholars I like a little bit more. Fair. Um, because I think it just, like, every, it just spoke to me, it felt really unique, and I just loved it so much. Uh, Inventors, I feel like, is really close, and I think the more that we play it, it could surpass it, or it could kind of be on the equal ground. Yeah. Um, I think it's just one of those games that was just really hard for us to introduce to other people. Unless they really like those complex strategy games. Yeah. But I really, really, really badly want to play this at four players because I think it's just going to shine. Yeah. Um, but all of them are games that are high up on my list overall. I adore all of them. I would play all of them. And that is my thoughts of the South Tigris trilogy. And how they compare to one another. <laughs> how they compare. Did I really talk about that? Maybe not. Not really. But that's but. why I'm here. We'll do, we'll do this. Okay. I'm not going to rank them because... I think that it's really tough for me to choose where Inventors lays. Okay. Um, I will tell you that Scholars is um, S Scholars was was better than Wayfarers for me. Okay. Um, I don't know where Inventors played. We've only played this three times at two players. Yeah. And I think that like it's hard for me to put that into a box of uh, where it would lay. Okay. Okay. Anyways, that's a preface. It doesn't matter. We'll get into the comparisons. I enjoyed Inventors because uh, unlike Scholars, and I said this before, the dice, the colors, you didn't necessarily have to worry about. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was very relieving, mm -hmm. especially because of all the other complexities that was going on in this game. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed being able to build my engine and then like promote myself from there. I thought mm -hmm. that was really interesting. The tower is fantastic. <laughs> Not a whole lot of games do that. Mm -hmm. uh, in that way, and then neither of the games, Scholars or Wayfarers, does it. I think that outside of the dice placement, all three of these games are extremely different. Mm -hmm. I think that you can't necessarily say that with the other trilogies. So, um, and I've said this about Garfield before, they keep getting better and better at their games, and this is just, I'm just waiting for it, for the game to come across. Uh, that knocks Paladins off of its podium, um, being my favorite it's... game oh, and everything. Your favorite game? So, still? Still. So I think like the more and more I get into it, I, I'll play this trilogy more, and then I can see Paladins being knocked off by one of the three of these. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that this is it's very interesting to see. Uh, the, my biggest praise for the comparison is that they are very different from one another. You will get similar icons. You'll get mm -hmm. similar um, like 
feels to it and then of course the dice being that main mechanic but other than that like expect a different game every time you're playing it uh yeah yeah and it's a perfect weekend to just go through all of them i hope they have another saga Ooh, they kind of take yeah. through all of them like the yeah. other three trilogies yeah. had the thomas saga and i forget the rune saga, the rune saga uh, yeah. the, so they must they must be making what do you think it'll be called uh, something to do with like a lamp i don't know a lamp uh, saga? Like, no, no, no. It will be called the lamp saga. I mean, if you're calling it the lamp saga, <laughs> go ahead. But <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, we'll have to see and we'll have to find out. But is there any last thoughts you have for inventors? Uh, overall, I thought this game was really complex, really great, and crunchy enough that I'm excited to show it to more people. Once, uh, once. Once I feel comfortable playing it myself, I think. Mm -hmm. There's more games, more game in this that I would like to explore, so I'm excited to do that. I feel the same way. I think this is a game that's going to hit our table again and again and again, because I think even from our first few plays, I was more and more excited to play it again and kind of figure out the little intricacies. Um, it's extremely well done. It's so much fun to play. And if any of this resonated with you, I encourage you to check out the Kickstarter, which is down below. You hit that link. Even if the game is already done, the Kickstarter is a helpful way to find all the information, all the mm -hmm. reviews, what you can find in the game, the components. Just hit that link. Mm -hmm. And of course, if this video helped you out, give us that thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you're new here. Let us know if you're excited to play Inventors, because we definitely were. And I think for our question of the day, we will stick with that one. There's a Rune Saga for the North Sea. <laughs> There's a Thomas Saga for the West Kingdom. What is the blank saga? It might already be revealed, to be honest. But if you're watching this video and you don't know, go guess. down below. Take a guess. Or if you don't like the name, make a better name. <laughs> That's chaotic. <laughs> well, thank you so much. We hope to see you in the next one. Bye. Everywhere. Well, I can't help that. It's, you're eating it. It's on your mouth. That's what we get for having so many animals. So many animals.